An empty room, dead center. She's sitting in the only chair. Roses lay in her lap and make a pile like blood around her feet. Four windows, one in each wall, are open. Wind blows every curtain straight out. White as sheets of ice, rigid and parallel with the floor. Only her fingers move, easily and in a rhythm, like she is playing the piano. Her mouth is painted, she smiles, red. And you can almost breathe the goddamn St. Louis blues. Dugout. He was sitting in the backyard looking at his hands. They were huge and gnarled, ancient. Every finger had been broken more times than he remembered. Every knuckle jammed into knots. Every bone in each shattered, splintered, and cracked in two. She watched him from the window and came out, thinking he was sad. What are you thinking about, honey? He looked up at her, then grinned. I was thinking about all of it, every damn second. How I wouldn't trade any of it for nothing. Six months earlier, they told him it was hopeless. The cancer was all over his body. She was with him and held his hands. He looked down, then at her, then at them. Well, he said, I guess that's the way the ball bounces. This was in the spring, 1959. He flew out in a great high arc through the air. He was six years old and landed in the Missouri River. Swim, you little son bitch, swim or drowned. His pa's voice, given the lessons. So he did, paddling like a dog and hating that voice and hating that water and running the two together inside his life forever, but forever also, never forgetting the shocking joy of that sudden flight through the air in the great high arc. And back on the banks, the first true knowing that he would never doubt his own body again. Whatever hell happens now, the little bitch can swim. His Paul's voice in the year 1892. Outside, a half dugout stuck half in and half out of the side of a small Oklahoma hill. The air is black with dirt, and the year is 1905. Inside, a large man looks down and clenches his fist over a wood box that holds a newborn baby girl. Her mouth is open in a tiny black screen, and the blood of birth still runs off her body. He stares at the tiny, wet, red sex. This is three of what will be his five children, and he would strangle it right now if his wife wasn't there watching him, weak but smiling. He thinks it is wicked and godless, a creature of the devil, and he will wrestle with that in his heart the rest of his life. Outside, if there is sound, it is something jagged and metal, banging and tinkling, banging and tinkling with the cries and the wind. The doctor pounds on the door. A blizzard slams daggers into the north wall of the house. He was eight years old and his neck was swollen big as a bucket. The doctor stomps his boots three times and walks over and looks right down his mouth. They gotta go, he says. His pa puts a long black iron poker on the fire. His ma looks at him from over her shoulder, where she stirs lye with a big wooden ladle. When the poker glows, his daddy calls his brother. Help me hold a little son bitch down. They hold him and the doctor shoves the glowing poker slow and deep into his throat and burns out his tonsils. His body went rigid from the pain, but it didn't make a sound. He just pictured this giant spoon whirling around in the lie. Boy's got some bark, the doctor says before he leaves. A week later, his neck was down 
but his mouth is still blistered shut. After that night, he never said more than he had to to anybody. This is in Missouri on a farm in the winter of 1894. Outside. She is five years old, and it's the Texas Panhandle of 1910. She wears a white dress and is sitting on the front seat of a covered wagon. The papa sits beside her holding the reins to two mules in one hand and a bullwhip flying from the other. His face is dark and furious, and the whip curls out of his fist like a snake. Deep bloody trenches groove across the animal's backs. She's looking away from him at her brothers and sisters skipping beside the wagon in the tall grass. Her hand covers her mouth, and her eyes are huge, like she's giggling. Inside, the mama sits on a wood box sewing. She has a sweet angelic set to her mouth. Her hair is up in a tight bun. In her lap is a hand-tinted photograph of a three-year-old. The girl is in a white dress. The eyes are huge, with black rings around them, and the mouth is frozen, curved downward, deep, blurred, and terrible. If there's sound, it's the mama humming. In the sweet by and by. Mm -hmm, that beautiful show. It is 1958. They have been together longer than they were ever with anyone else. It is late at night. They lay in separate beds and talk about their lives. The stories come up one by one, and great spaces open up and move in and out between them. She says a person has to dig into the heart of everything, and what little gets dug out is all there is, or will ever be. He says he remembers every game. She says she remembers every single song, and it no longer is just about the two of them. It's all of it, most of which can never be said. It just lays in secrets in the dark, like the black gap between the two beds that holds their hands. It has nothing to do with growing old. <laughs> 